Ooh. Yes, my name is Ronan Park and I am 20. Oh God, I had to think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, when I obviously did the show, I just kind of, I didn't think about what was going to happen. I didn't have any expectations. I was just like, I'm doing this. I love singing. I'm going to do it. So I, I did it and had the reaction that I had. And I was very lucky to, to have that. But nobody can really kind of prepare you for what comes with it. And you know, I, at 12, I, I had a Facebook page that was private. And I had all my settings private. And I only had friends on there. I didn't have Twitter. I didn't have Instagram. And then it was like, okay, you have to have these things. You have to have an official page. You have to like delete your private Facebook. You have to have a Twitter account. It's all going to be official and it's not going to be your friends. It's not going to be people you know. <laughs> it's going to be people who watch a huge TV show. And you kind of open the doors for everybody's opinion. Everybody kind of who watch the sh watches the show or watches anything always has an opinion on everything. But... I guess I just wasn't prepared for kind of people that didn't know me to have so many opinions of me and, and so much to say about me. Um, so I guess that opened my eyes to how things work when, when you're kind of in the public eye as such. And yeah, I had to, I had to get used to that quite quickly, that, that opinions would come flooding in and they weren't all going to be great. <laughs> When, with this being my career, singing, that is kind of how it works. And I just had to accept that that's, that's what it is. Um, it was intense, especially when I was on the show. Um, every week I was on the television. So every week people had new things to say. Um, so I guess to begin with, it was really difficult. And I'd, I'd always speak to my parents about it. I mean, my parents used to kind of read some of the things and it was it was shocking that these people could say such awful things about someone they just don't know and I'd never done anything to them. I was just a little kid kind of singing on TV. And then after the show, it kind of, it kept happening. And so I was able to kind of say to the team of people I was working with, look, I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to be doing this. I, it's not good for me. It would, you know, really, especially at the age that I was, it really upset me. It was something that, I was struggling with. Um, so I just, I spoke to everyone that I was working with and, and my, my family, and they kind of got people in that kind of did the social media for me. And so I didn't have to read it, which was really good because now I'm at a stage where I just don't care anymore. And I'm, you know, I'm on social media, I accept it. If I see it, I really don't care. It doesn't bother me. But it took a while to kind of accept that that's how it's going to work. And that's, how society is. People are always going to have opinions and they're not always going to be positive. I think, um, I, I genuinely believe social media now is unhealthy because there's a filter to your life. You get to put everything that is great about your life. You get to show what you want to show, which is nice. You know, you don't have to show everything, but it almost creates this unreal reality. And it's, it's unhealthy, I think, for young people to kind of pretend to be something they're not a lot of the time. Um, so it's, it's just difficult because it has become such a big part of society now. It's, it's crazy if you don't have social media, it's like if somebody says, oh, you know, I don't have Facebook, I don't have Twitter, you're like, what? How, like, how are you finding out what's going on in the world? And that's ridiculous. Like we have the news, why can't we <laughs> put the energy we put into social media into other things, but it has become such a huge platform all of them all the social media has become such a big platform now and it's hard to and I think it's unfortunate that young people now who are growing up with social media it's they're never going to be able to understand what it was like without it if you did something went for a coffee and you didn't take a picture it's like it didn't happen I mean how crazy is that it's just like it's just unreal to me it doesn't seem right because you it just feel like you're not really in touch with your own feelings and who you actually are. Instead, you're trying to please everyone else and trying to show everyone else your life. If that's what you want to do, cool. But it, I think a lot of the time it becomes unhealthy because you're not being true to yourself. I see that a lot of the time with, with predominantly young people on social media. It's this constant trying to impress people and I think that's really unhealthy. 
Um, it was really difficult with, with certain comments. Some of them are just, it was like, whatever, and, you know, I, I don't care. But some of them were, they were like threats, death threats, rape threats. It was, it was intense. And that's when I had to sit down with my family and just be like, this is crazy. And I, you know, you guys need to know this is happening. And so I spoke to people at school, I spoke to my teachers, and then I obviously spoke to people I was working with. And it was all through conversation and being open about it. And that's what, when I obviously did the, the song with Kidscape, um, and that was the anti-bullying song with the charity, that was my moment where I could kind of stand up and just say, this is me. Like, you can't change my view on myself. I, I am what I am, I am who I am, and I'm proud of it. And so that was a turning point for me when I did the song. I used something that I was passionate about to put my emotions into that. And for me, releasing that and the amount of young people that kind of came to me and started telling me their stories, it had this conversation. Everybody was talking about their own things and then you know you're not alone. Because I think, especially when it was happening to me, I felt like I was the only person that was being treated this way. And, you know, I was the only person that was being told these nasty things by strangers. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, but I felt alone. But by kind of having a passion and, and going into that and, and using that and putting all my emotion into that and then having a conversation with other people that were also strangers, but we were kind of talking about our own experiences, you then know you're not alone. There are people out there you can talk to. And I always say when people ask me, you know, I do get the question a lot, how did you deal with the cyberbullying? I always say I spoke to people. I was just honest about it. I said, I'm hurting because of this. I'm upset because this has been said. It's, you know, it's affecting me. And that's how it, I got over it because I had people supporting me. And I think that's the best way to go about it. Speak to someone, 100%. Always. I mean, there's even organisations like Kidscape that I worked with that there's people to talk to, always. Um, and I just think when you keep it all in all the time, it just eats you up. Like I, I used to kind of keep it in um, the comments that would be said and I'd, they'd run around my head when I was trying to sleep and that, that's all I could think about. As soon as I spoke to someone, I just, I didn't think about it anymore because I'd, I'd got it all out. And I know that you can feel like ashamed or weak by talking about it, but it's completely the opposite. And I'm, you know, I'm, I feel that there's so much strength in showing your weaknesses. I really do. Um, so yeah, speak to someone 100%.